Yo, what's going on everybody? It's Straight Outta Boston and today I'm back for episode number 3 of my Toronto Maple Leafs Rebuild Series here on Franchise Hockey Manager 2. And today we're back with the 2016 offseason, so we have just wrapped up season number 1. Um, I already forget who won the Stanley Cup, but I should probably figure that out, because I'm sure you guys are going to want to know. And it was the Kings! They won their third cup, and they beat the New York Rangers. Wow. So a rematch of the cup final from two years ago, and the Kings win their third cup in five years. Uh, Ovechkin was MVP, Dowdy won the Conn Smythe, looks like Ben Bishop won the Vezina, uh, Petrangelo won the Norris, McDavid won the Calder, Lombardi won GM of the Year, Bergeron won another Selkie, Ovechkin had the most goals, also won the Art Ross, um, Kevin Hayes won the Plus Minus Award, nice. Love me some Kevin Hayes. Good, uh, good Boston boy right there. Lean it looks like, uh, all right, these are, all right, that's that. So, um, all right, we ended up having a really bad second half, which actually worked out in our favor because we ended up with the fourth worst record in the league. However, we will be picking fifth instead of fourth because the Ottawa Senators won the draft lottery. So they will be picking number one overall, and they will be picking Austin Matthews with that pick, uh, but we will get to that in a bit. We're also going to be picking ninth in the draft, something that I didn't even realize until I checked it out about five minutes before recording this. But we also own the ninth pick because, as I didn't even think about, we own the Pittsburgh Penguins pick this year because of the Phil Kessel trade. And the Penguins, surprisingly enough, had the ninth worst record in the league. They uh, only compiled 77 points in 82 games. They had a very down year, and I'm sure when they traded for Phil Kessel, they imagined themselves having a nice deep uh, playoff run in the Eastern Conference not uh, being in the lottery so that worked out in our favor a lot better than it probably probably could have imagined it but uh, all right so we own two picks in the top 10 this year that is great um that is really really good news i honestly like didn't expect that but i'm so thrilled because it's going to help us out so much all right so first things first we have some uh personnel who uh, have expiring contracts now uh most of these guys we're not going to bring back because i want to overhaul the scouting uh department because right now, most of the scouts, uh, most of these scouts are not very highly rated. But we are going to bring back Mike Babcock. His contract did expire, but I want to negotiate an extension with him. He's pretty much uh, the best coach that we could get at this point. Uh, he's one of the better coaches in the game, and I want to bring him back. Of course, he signed a five-year deal or like a ten-year deal or something in real life. Um, I think it was like a five-year, fifty million dollar contract or something absurd. But um, yeah, we're definitely going to bring him back, and we're actually going to get him on a discount. <laughs> you see only a little more than $2 million for the next three years, so pretty nice. Um, all right, Peter Horacek is an assistant. Uh, we're going to let him go because his assistant ratings are not very good. Um, and then all these scouts, I think we're going to let go because really none of them are that great, um, and we can definitely get improvements on them. That guy's not too bad, Steve Casper, but even him, I think we could get uh, a better American scout than him. John Lilly, yeah, none of these guys are really that great. Um, and there are going to be plenty of better scouts than these guys in the free agents. So I'm not worried about that. I think the only other um, assistant is Steve Spot. Yeah, and he's not that great either. So I think we'll replace him as well. Uh, it looks like Michael Grabner is going to be free agent. So hey, we could bring him back if we wanted, but we're probably not going to. Um, all right, so let's go to personnel, free agents. Oops, uh, I clicked on history by accident. That's going to freeze the game. All right, there we go. Uh, back to personnel, free agents. There we go. So um, first things first, let's get a couple assistants. Um, we'll look at training. So all right, let's see. Um, the first things first, I want to find a guy who can coach goalies because that is uh, the one thing that Babcock does not do very well. Um, this guy looks like he's not too bad. All right, so we'll keep him, keep an eye on him, Herbert Hohenberger. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. I want to try and find a guy who doesn't have any negative ratings and has enough positive ratings. Um, not a ton of great options. Let's see. I think I think Hohenberger might be our best bet, so I think we'll hire him, and we'll give him a three-year deal. And then, um, all right, we don't have to worry about that now. What else does Babcock not do well? Let's go back to personnel. Babcock, he it's the physical training. All right, so if we can find somebody with good physical training, let's see personnel, free agents, um, training. Assistant coach and physical training. All right, so can we find somebody who, yeah, maybe this guy, David Alexander, wouldn't be too bad, I don't think. Um, who else would be an option? Maybe this guy. He's got, dang, he's got some negative ratings though. I don't love that. Uh, who else? Ooh, might have to go. Oh yeah, this is our best bet. All right, we'll go with him then. 
Hire assistant coach. Not looking for too much. Three years. Perfect. All right. And then for scouting, uh, we'll go back to free agents. So we'll look at scouting and we'll just look at scouts and we'll sort by ability to evaluate potential. So we want to primarily hire uh, American and Canadian scouts, um, but looks like the best scout available is a Russian and it wouldn't hurt to have guy uh, a guy who can scout in the KHL, so we'll hire him. Um, we'll hire Robert Tottle. He can scout the Ontario region. Um, we'll hire, let's see, we could hire Bobby Stefanik. Wouldn't be too bad, I suppose. We could also go with... We'll definitely want this guy, Rick Nickel, because he can scout uh, all of the U.S. and Canada. So we'll hire him. We'll give him a four-year deal. Um, Kirk Wizen, Wicken Heiser will hire. He can scout the Saskatchewan reason, region. Um, we'll want a British Columbian scout as well. So we'll hire Sean Wicker. Give him a three-year deal. Um, we already got an Ontario guy. We could get an Alberta guy. Um, or we could go with this. We could go with another. We have him. Or we could go with... So he's 11-18. The Alberta guy is 1017. All right, so we'll go with the Alberta guy then. It's not too much worse. We're gonna give him. Mm, we'll only give him a one-year deal though, because I think we could probably find a better Alberta scout at some point. Um, all right, do you want to hire one more maybe? Um, I suppose we should have. Mm, mm, that's all right. Uh, did we hire a British Columbian guy? I think we did. But sorry, we'll get another one because I don't remember if we did. We'll hire him for two years. All right. So that'll do that. Let's head over to possible free agents. So we have a ton of possible free agents here. I'm not going to re-sign all these guys. Um, we'll start with the big names though. Nazem Kadri is an unrestricted free agent. And he is looking for ooh, upwards of $4.8 million a year. So, I mean, I think Kadri... He's only got three and a half star potential, it looks like. He had a 72 game rating last year, only at 47 points. I'd say that's really not worth 4.8 million. Um, I mean, I'm not even really sure he can be a top six forward if he produces like he did last year. So I think we'll probably let him walk. Um, now, I think there's a chance that his demands could come down because I don't know if there's going to be much of a market for him at that price when he does go to unrestricted free agency. But I don't know. We'll see. Uh, but for now, I don't think I'm going to bring him back, at least not yet. Um, Morgan Riley, though, definitely want to bring back. And he's only going to be looking for, it looks like, uh, a bridge deal. So 2.17 over two years. We'll do that. And there we go. Um, so the restricted free agents in this game often do not demand what they would command otherwise. In real life, I think Riley's probably going to get a big extension after this season with Toronto. Um... But in this game, the restricted free agents almost never demand what they're worth. So it's really nice to get. Um, and that's why I'm really excited to have a second pick in the top 10 this year. Because when you get guys into that sort of system where they're on their entry-level deal and then they have a couple restricted contracts before they get to unrestricted free agency, you can really get guys who are less than what they're worth. And it's really important to do. In the NHL, when you're working with a hard salary cap, you can't have bad contracts in the NHL and still win. I think uh, I really believe in that. So, all right. Uh, P.A. Parento. And I'm... I shouldn't say that. I mean, I should say it's really hard to win with bad contracts in NHL. A lot harder than it is in the other three major sports. But all right, P.I. Parental, we're not going to bring back. Zilichki, we're not going to bring back. Same with Kelly. Same with Polak. Larson, we'll bring back. Uh, he was one of the guys that claimed off waivers at the beginning of the year. He's not looking for too much. I think we could probably get him on a two-way deal as well. Let's do a $70,000 minor league salary. All right, submit that. Um, Richard Panic. What is he looking for? He wants more than a million. All right, so we'll give him the qualifying offer, but I'm not going to bring him back at that price. Submit. Um, Pajarvi, whose name I forgot how to pronounce, even though I just learned it like the other day. Uh, he's unrestricted, I believe, right? And he's looking for a million, so I don't think we're going to bring him back. Let me just double check. Yeah, he is unrestricted. All right, so we're going to let Pajarvi go, or however you pronounce his name. Stuart Percy. Um, we could bring back, but he's only got three-star potential, so I think we'll let him walk, even though he is a uh, only a restricted free agent. Um, we could at least qualify him, or you know what, I won't qualify him yet, because if I move him, I'll probably move him at the draft, so I want to do that. Josh Levo, though, we'll bring back. He's got three-and-a-half-star potential, so why not meet the man, and I think we can get him on a two-way deal as well. Let's see. Yes, we can. Um, same thing with Scott Harrington. Let's renew his contract. Yep, 880000 And can we get him on a two-way deal is the question. Yes, we can. All right. Um, and then Peter Holland will also bring back. He's got three and a half potential. 
only looking for a two-year deal. I like that. And we can give you 70000 for a minor league salary. Awesome. Uh, Martin Marinson, he's unrestricted. And he's kind of useless. I don't think he's very good. So, yeah, he's demanding more than a million. So, yeah, all right, we're going to let him walk. Um, and let's see the rest of these guys. Corrado, I think, will let walk. Granberg, Carrick. These guys are all three-star potential, so I don't really think there's... Uh, a ton of need to bring them back. Sparks, you can bring that back, though. Garrett Sparks, he had that awesome shutout in his debut the other night. So I'll bring him back. Let's give him a two-way deal. 70000 As for response, submit. Um, TJ Brennan, we're also going to bring back because he was pretty good in our third pairing last year. 67 game rating. So I um, want to bring him back. He can play on my third pairing again for the foreseeable future. And he's not looking for too much. Um, and if I can, I'd love to get him on a two-way deal. I don't know if he'll take one, but might as well offer. See what, see if he'll uh, take it. Oh, he will. All right, perfect. Um, all right, Baxter, we're going to let go. And Casey Bailey. Let me give him back Casey Bailey. Why not? The local kid from Buffalo. Oh, never mind. I thought he was from Buffalo. Hmm. Should we bring him back then? Oh, no. He's looking for way too much. Never mind. All right, so that's that. Um... Do we have anything else to do before the draft? I don't think so. Um, so the only thing is... Alright. So let's take a look at the draft. Let me set this up. Because there are about six or seven players in this draft that I really like. And then everyone after that, um, I don't really like. <laughs> or I don't like as much. So I want to try and move from number nine to number six or seven if I can. I've already got the fifth pick. Um, the guys I like in this draft are Matthews, Puljajarvi, Lane, uh, Chichurin. Um, let's see... Tikachuk, however you pronounce that guy's name. I have no idea how to pronounce it. Uh, LaJoy, who I really like, who I want to pick if I can, at number five. And Sam Steele. And I think there might be one more. Or is that seven? I guess that's seven. All right, so those are the, those are the seven guys that I really like. And those are probably going to be the top seven in the draft. Um, what I want to do is I think I want to try and get LaJoy at number five. He's the guy I really want because I think he's got the chance to be a beast. I drafted him in another save one time, and he turned into a guy who was like consistently putting up 90 game ratings and was a number one defenseman and a Norris Trophy candidate every year. And I know we already have some good young defensemen like Jake Gardner and Morgan Riley, but I think if we draft LaJoy, um, you know, he could really be that top pairing number one defenseman of the future. So I want to try and get him. Um, and I think also because... I think uh, in this game, there's a higher chance of guys working out when you draft defensemen early on, uh, as opposed to forwards. I just think it's how the game works. Um, I don't know why. I just it's from my experience. I have a higher success rate drafting defensemen high in the draft than I do drafting forwards. Um, now the rest of these forwards, I'm just looking at. Pulja Jarvi and Lane are pretty similar. They're big right shot, uh, right wings. I think Pulja Jarvi's six five or six three. Lane is listed at six five, but I think he's actually only six four. Um, Matthews, he's going to go number one. All right, so let's do, let's go to the fifth pick. See who gets taken before us. Matthews, Chichurin goes number two. Poole Jajarvi goes number three. That's a bit of a reach, I would think, but all right. Edmondson, they could use a big, uh, well, Edmondson probably really wanted Chichurin. Or Ch I'm not pronouncing that name right. I, I apologize. I'm going to pronounce like every name wrong in this game, I know. But uh, you guys are just going to have to get used to it. Um... All right, and then I think... I don't know who's going to remember. I hope LaJoy doesn't get picked, but let's see. All right, nice. They picked the uh, Kachuk. I assume that T is silent. I, I don't know. I don't even know, man. Uh, it's another thing. I'm going to try and pick guys with names that I can pronounce. And one of them is Max LaJoy, and that's who I'm going to go with with the fifth pick. Like I said, I think he's got the chance to be a number one D-man. He's not huge. He's only six foot one. Um, and the only, thing I, the only other thing I don't love is that his hockey sense isn't that high. Um, but I think it has the chance to get uh, go higher because his he's definitely not developed yet. And the thing I like about him is look at his offensive ratings. His defending's already at 12, and he's still got a ton of room to grow. So I think he's going to be very, very good. So I'm going to pick him at number five. Uh, let's see. Here we go. Pick. And then, all right, the two names that I really want left are Patrick Lane and Sam Steele. So the question is, which ones should we go for? Um, I've had Lane in the past. He usually turns into a pretty good, you know, he can be a first or second line right wing. Um, but I think Steele, hmm, Steele's a center. We don't necessarily have a ton of depth at center in the organization, that's for sure. Hmm. I don't want Logan Brown. Brown would probably be the eighth guy. I bet Brown goes, actually, no, Brown will probably go like 10 or 11. Or maybe he'll go nine, I don't know. 
Um, so it's between Steel and Lane. The question is, uh, all right, so could we try and trade up with Dallas? Dallas or Winnipeg? That's the real question. So let's see. Uh, if we can trade with Dallas, then we'd have our choice. But the question is, what do they want? So let's see. Offer up our pick. And I don't know if they're interested in any of the guys that we have coming off the books. Like, potentially, uh, Richard Panic. Oh, all right. They would probably accept that already. Um, I might have to run a little bit more, though, because I feel like that's a little bit... That's not really that much to, uh, to move up three spots in the draft. Um, who else is a restricted free agent for us? We have Bailey we could offer up. Yeah, they like him, too. I might just offer up a bunch of these guys. Panic, Bailey, um, maybe one more. Maybe they can have, uh, not Harrington, but Percy. Stuart Percy. Yeah, right here. All right, cool. So we'll do that. We'll offer up those three guys to move up three spots in the draft. Offer trade. All right, and finalize. Cool. So now we have our choice. We can go between Lane and Sam Steele. Um, and I don't know. It's a tough choice. Very, very tough choice. Hmm. I might have to think about this for a sec. All right, I made up my mind, and I'm going to be going with Patrick Lane, the big, the big right shot, right wing, number six. And then I imagine Steele's going to be going to Winnipeg next. Let's see. Yes, he is. Then I'm just curious who's going to go. I kind of want to just see who goes in the top ten here. I want to see where Logan Brown goes, particularly. Tyler Benson goes number nine. Yep, Brown went number ten. All right, to Buffalo. Ooh. <laughs> I kind of like that for Buffalo. But all right, um... So then the only other thing I'm thinking about is we have, let's see, we have the 34th pick. I think that's our only second round pick, but we have two thirds. Um, I kind of want to move into the late first because there are two guys that I like that I know are going to go in the 20s. One of them is Carl Grundstrom, uh, and the other is a defenseman. But I guess since we already have somebody defenseman, we should probably target Grundstrom. Um, and that defenseman is, yeah, here he is. Frederick Allard. Um, he usually is pretty good in this game. I've seen him turn into a pretty good D-man in this, but I've also seen him, I've seen him turn into a not-so-good D-man in this, so it can go either way. Um, and I've sort of seen the same with Grunstrom, uh, but that's why I like those two guys. So, I don't know. The question is, could we move maybe to number 24? Or should we just stick at 34? The thing at 34 is we could get Alex Nylander, who is uh, Willie Nylander's brother. Yeah, there he is. Where is he? I just passed him now. Go back. Oh. Now I don't know where he is. Must be back down here. Yeah, there he is. Alex Nylander, who is a 4A right winger. And it'd be nice to have the Nylander brothers together. I think that'd be cool. Um... All right, well, since we already traded up once in this draft, I don't really feel like doing it twice because it's kind of easy to trade up in this game and can be kind of a little bit cheesy, and I don't really want to do it as often as... Or I don't really want to be doing it every draft, um, and I know I just did it, so... All right, we'll just go until the next pick, until our next pick. Um, yep, there we go, 34, and I'm just curious. Let's see, Grunstrom went 24, yep, to Columbus, and Allard went 23, there you go. And, yeah, there's Cedar Holm. He would have been another nice guy to grab. Um, but I'm pretty sure Nylander's still available, so I think we're going to grab him. There's Charlie McAvoy, the BU defenseman. Max Jones, another American. All right. Um, and there aren't any four and a half A's left, correct? There shouldn't be. No, there are not. All right, so I think we're going to go with Alex Nylander then. Pair up the Nylander brothers. And then we'll go pick and tell human once again. We've got the 64th pick. Um, so, alright, we've got Noah Carroll, wouldn't be a bad option, we've got some, hmm, got some interesting guys here, um, let's see, Henley wouldn't be a bad option, but I think he might fall a couple more rounds. Alright, so with our first third round pick, and we actually do have two third round picks here, I think we're picking 74, um, I think we got that pick from the Wild in the Michael Grabner trade, maybe? Um, I don't remember though, to be exact. Either way, um... No, I guess we didn't get that in the Michael Gravner trade. I don't know then. I don't know when we got that pick, but I think it might be the Wilds' third round pick. But anyway, it's besides the point. Um, so for the first third round pick, we're going to use it on this guy, Alex Debrinkat, who put up 77 points in the OHL last year. The thing I like about him is he's already got 18 puck handling. Now he's undersized, and he can't play defense worth a lick. But um, 
He put up a lot of points in the OHL last year, so I'm hoping he can be a good offensive player in the NHL. And then, uh, let's pick him. Five foot eight, really undersized. I don't know when he would have gotten picked otherwise, but... All right, and then pick it all human. Hopefully my guy is still going to be available, and I think he is. It is going to be... Simon Stransky, another uh, forward from the WHL. 65 points last year. And I think his game rating was in the mid-80s. So, all right. We got a couple of wings. And then I already have a couple of defensemen in mind with my next few picks. Um, let's pick a little human. Let's see if these guys are still going to be available. Um, one of them. Here he is. David Henley. So, Henley had a good year in the QJ, Q, QM, what is it? QMJHL last year. Uh, 87 game rating. And so he's probably a guy who uh, we would give an entry-level contract to right away and then at least get him uh, with the Marlies for next year, assuming that he is not under contract with his uh, WHL team anymore, or his Q, his Q team anymore. Charlestown. Sorry, right, we'll pick him. David Henley. And then uh, I'll pick until human again. We've got the 124th pick. I think we have a fifth-round pick, and then that might be it. We might have a sixth. I'm not sure. I think that might be it though, yeah. All right. Um, so who do we want to pick with this pick then? Uh, we could go with Hatchek, he's another defenseman. This one's from the dub. Um, let's see. Are there any good four A's left? Four A stars is the question. Uh, Toivola we could go with, he's not too bad. Martineau. Only 19 points last year. He's probably a grinder then. A uh, couple Americans. Shevlin is one. Jeff Shevlin. Brisgala. Frederick Bratt. And that's it for the four A's. So, all right. I think we'll go with Toivola then. Yeah, from the ASML. Which I think is the same league that Patrick Lane played in. He might have been teammates, actually. Let's see. Where are they? No, I guess they weren't. Never mind. Tapera, he played for some other team. All right. Um, all right, and then we have one more pick. Pick a little human. Oh, actually, I guess we have two more picks because we have, yeah, 143 and 154. Um, all right, so we've got some options. Then I don't really know who to go with, though, is the thing. Could go with Jonathan Ong. He's got 4.5B. There's still Hajek. Um, any other four and a half B's from one of the Canadian leagues? Scott Eanzor. So we could go with either of those guys, I suppose. Or we could probably get both of them. Um, or we could go with one of the four A uh, Americans, like Sh Jeff Shevlin. 48 points in 51 games the USHL team last year. And there's another. Or maybe he's already gotten picked. I guess the other four A American got picked. Um, and then I know, like, we could go with Otto Sampi. I might go with Otto Sampi, but I, he usually doesn't get picked till the seventh round, so I could get him way later if I wanted. Um, so maybe I'll pick him at 154, and I'll go with... Hmm. Could I possibly trade... I wonder if I could trade one of my restricted free agents for someone's seventh round pick, because I can get Sampi in the seventh, and what I might want to do, actually, is... Let's see. Can I? I want to trade. Let's try to trade for like Edmonton seventh round pick. Because I do want to get Otto Sampi. Um, all right, seventh rounder. We'll get the star seventh rounder because it's gonna be higher, I think. Um, and let's see. We should have. Can we offer Karik? What if we offer Karik and Corrado? Well balanced offer, huh? What if we offer up this guy too, Granberg? They might want to pick actually. Um, can we offer up a future seventh or something? Yeah, we have two sixths, that's why. So we still have three picks then. Oh, okay, well wait, if we already have three picks left in this draft, then we don't need to make another trade. Let's see, there's the second. We're supposed to have another sixth. Oh, okay. We'll get Snoppy at 172 then. Um, okay, so then what I'm going to do is go with Jonathan Ang. Or Ong. Uh, pick until human. Then we're going to go with Scott Eanzer. Eanzer. I don't know how to pronounce that. Pick him. 
and then pick until human once again and we will go with Sompy. assuming he's still here which he should be somewhere at the top of the four and a half A's oh there he is right here auto Sompy. and yeah Sompy's a beast so he has great offensive ratings and 84 game rating so yeah I'm definitely gonna pick him of course I'm gonna lose him so now I gotta find him again the thing I don't like about it, the menus in this game are probably one of my few complaints about it. They're a little hard to navigate, but it's only the second edition that, that of this game ever, so I imagine I'll get better as they make more of these. But all right, Pixel Human, and that is the draft. All right, so um, now let me just double check. Let's go to unsigned draftees. Do we have anyone whose signing deadline is 2016? Doesn't look like it. All right, so I'm not going to sign any of these guys then until... Uh, until we get um, until we get to July 1st because if we go to info here um, a bunch of these guys are B potential or uh, B level scouting and so uh, I think most of them will turn to A if we just wait and right, yeah, right now we don't have any three and a half um, right now we don't have any three and a half A's so usually uh, usually I'll sign three star A's but for right now I think it's probably safe to wait um, the only thing is, I'm wondering if maybe some of these guys will get their contracts renewed. That's the only thing I am a little nervous about. So, let's see. Timoshev put up a 87 game rating in the queue last year. Um, LaJoy only was an 85. He could maybe use one more year. He's got one more year under contract, so I think we'll leave him in that dub for one more year. Um, Lane, I'm not sure if we should wait a year on him as well. All right, let's offer Timoshev a contract. Oh, okay, wait, we have to wait a day. We have to simulate one more day. I forgot. I forgot. All right. Okay, now we can sign, guys. All right, so Timoshev, let's offer him an entry-level deal. Meet demand, ask for response, submit offer. Um, and let's start by game rating. Who else? Henley, he's got one more year on his contract, but he's probably, I'd say he's got a good shot of making the our team out of camp, um, but we don't have his scouting at A yet, so I think we'll wait on him. Um, let's just check the guys on one-year deals. These are the guys we really care about. Are any of these guys ones that we really feel like we should bring up? Um... Yeah, probably. Yeah, we should probably sign these guys. All right. Um, we'll offer DeRocher. That's for response. I don't even know what it is. Des Rocher, I guess. Um, Scott Einser, he's 20, so we should probably get him out of the dub. We'll offer him a contract. Meet the man. Ask for response. Submit an offer. Oh, contract maximum. Okay, well, now we are going to have to wait until July 1st then. To offer anyone else contracts, so I guess we just gotta hope that these guys don't get their contracts renewed. Um, this guy can get his contract renewed. He's still only three and a half star. What was his game rating in the O last year? Seventy six. All right, so I wouldn't mind keeping him there one more year. Um, Timoshev, we're gonna get Nielsen, fifty two points, eighty one game rating. We could probably use him right now. So him and Inter, we definitely want to sign. But all right, we'll just have to wait until uh, July first. All right, so I think I found the Dion Phaneuf trade I want to make. It is going to be to the Colorado Avalanche for one of their restricted free agents this year, Calvin Picker. They have a ton of restricted free agents. Um, they've got Hishin, Gormley, Agazzini, and Pickard. Um, and it is quite a bit, in my opinion, or at least I would say so, but uh, either way. Um, so, yeah, Pickard, we're going to throw in Phaneuf, and we're going to throw in a seventh-round pick as well. And then Pickard, he has been pretty good as a backup the last couple of years. Granted, they've been small sample sizes, but we need a backup. And um, first, I just want to see what his contract demands are. Oh, he's not even looking for that much. So that works out perfectly. All right, let's offer trade. And then they should accept within the coming days. But let's just, um, I think we'll simulate here for it a couple days. And just watch them accept that. But we should also get word back from some of those free agents. And we'll see where some of the top free agents in this year's class go as well. Usually most of them sign on the first day of free agency. And we'll see. You can see how slow it is to simulate in this game. Very, very frustrating. Very, very slow. 
but either way, 